earlier, we we have been trying to avoid the the use of the word exhibits here uh, because we're trying to and we're working hard on making a distinction between collections and exhibits. And and so uh, a little tongue in cheek here that uh, we still call it exhibits, but what you're really looking at is a collection. Um, and this is our test site. We did just last week or a week before, we went production with a spotlight instance, which is currently empty now, but we are developing a collection that will go in there. It's actually a very interesting collection of decorative papers. And so hopefully in a month or two, we'll have a live production digital collection out there that we'll be able to show off and we'll post it. Uh, we certainly will post it to the list. Um, to, to start with, I have to figure out how we do this, uh, to give you a little background of the e ecosystem, uh, we started off by designing our system in mural by creating this landscape that goes on forever. It is hard to see, I understand, uh, but I will share this PDF, uh, share a PDF of this on the website so you can see this. This, this really was a concept document created uh, about a year and a half ago. I don't want to say two years ago because that sounds like a long time, but this is a year, about a year and a half ago, which kind of encapsulated our vision for a digital asset management ecosystem. Uh, we knew that there would be a number of components and products that would fit into this ecosystem. Uh, and at the core of it here, possibly you can, you can see that we are and have been a DSpace shop for the longest time. Fedora is fairly new to us, but we're not taking the approach that we're dumping DSpace and we're going to switch everything over to Fedora. So all of our efforts now are, are really centering on establishing parity between these, uh, between these repositories. Uh, and we're also looking at some. Uh, very good work coming out of uh, Georgetown and the Digital Georgetown Initiative and their work with DSpace. We expect to see similar things happen with our uh, collections as well. And that regardless of where you have your content, you would be able to participate in all of these uh, services and products that you're going to see flow to the right. Uh, we decided very long ago that, D that Spotlight would be. At that time, we were talking about digital collections, uh, our digital exhibits. Uh, we also saw the value of Spotlight for doing collection work. And so we like that as well. And we've seen other sites that have done that uh, as well. We, we have decided that with an ecosystem and interconnects, and, and I'm sure that uh, folks that are thinking at the API level, maybe Luke, uh, would appreciate the fact that uh, building on top of protocols like IIIF, for instance, for the images, that we can now look for essentially the best, uh, best product set or best of breed and bring those on as a toolkit. So our range of viewers, Mirador, Universal Viewer, Universal Viewer, whatever, we can integrate that in. We're running the, um, we're running Cantaloupe as our triple IF server right now and it's serving up content uh, throughout the infrastructure. We're looking now at building uh, and focusing our efforts on building a, a huge solar index and uh, black light front end to go with that. Uh, these are new things for us. So we are actually plowing new ground and we're learning as we go along. Um, and ultimately what we plan to lead up to way over here on the right hand side of this of this screen would be that we would have a digital collections page that would anchor all of this effort uh, kind of along the lines of, of what you might see at Cornell and their digital collections uh, is kind of the pattern that we're using at this point though it we've morphed a number of things together in there but this is this is kind of where we're going. And what you see here is just a representation. This is not the page, but it is an example of what it might look like ultimately. We recently, at the end of last calendar year, we had a planning session and we borrowed things from uh, Kathy and the Stanford group. 
in that uh, I did create a, uh, I, I will show it here briefly, we did create an inception deck so that I could try my hand at this thing for the first time through, uh, which then gave us you know, a number of, uh, of slides where we could actually pitch what we wanted in this round of development for our management system. And then this was the mural that went with that, with that inception deck. And you can see that one of the key parts for us here was that we wanted to create uh, a discovery service that um, actually encompassed all of our digital content, regardless of where it was existing uh, in the infrastructure. Uh, so, you know, uh, Kathy, I'll look at you. If, it, if it's looking reasonable on the screen and the image is coming through, you could just nod or something would be great or shake your head. Okay, great. Perfect. Perfect. Because I didn't want to keep chattering away uh, if, it, if it wasn't coming through. So now that this infrastructure was going in place, uh, we decided that we actually needed to put some content into the system and see how it would flow through uh, flow through the system and we had been working with Spotlight for a while and uh, we do have a joke around here that these two exhibits that you see up on your screen right now have been recreated like three times from scratch using different technologies uh, and, it, and it's kind of a tongue-in-cheek that don't worry about it Mike will rebuild his exhibit wherever it needs to go so um, this is probably about the last time it will move uh, because we've, we've pretty much settled on a methodology. So we're going to take a look at, uh, at these collections. Uh, it happens to be a collection that's from an exhibit catalog, so that we keep our terminology correct. Uh, what, we, what we do each time we have a physical exhibit we create a printed catalog that goes along with it. So we actually took the catalog for our last exhibit, or one of our last exhibits, the Great War, which is a World War I exhibit, a very good exhibit that went well here, uh, was a collaboration with the folks, uh, with a number of folks. And we put that online as a triple IF manifest and we put it into our Fedora instance and that, that got us started on working with manifest and uh, and how we would do manuscripts. Um, and then when we saw Parker Library on the web, what we decided that we would do, uh, Kathy, as your inspiration, is we're going to go through and digitize all of the exhibit catalogs and put them out there as triple IF manifest, just like y'all did at your manifest at uh, for Parker. And that will be also one of our collections. Uh, and we do like the experience you get with Mirador. This is uh, a, ver a fairly current version of Mirador. So we took this catalog, and, and this was something I figured I could do because it, you don't have to be creative. I just mirrored the catalog in a collection in, uh, in Spotlight. And so this is what we're going to see here and what we were able to do is put that online uh, in spotlight and start demoing to our customers here inside the library what they could do with uh, with the CMS and how they could put this together and this actually is almost a page for page mirror of what you're going to see in the in the catalog the other thing that we also worked with is we created what we thought was a true table of contents uh, idea. If you look at the catalog, you will see that it has a table of contents that looks very much like this. Uh, and so now we can navigate using that, uh, using that uh, table of contents. We, we have, you know, we have some very good uh, pictures that were in that collection. Again, we looked at, um, you know, how could we demonstrate the features that were in Spotlight and also bring in uh, the rest of the ecosystem that we were putting together? And so that's why we will uh, see, for instance, that we could integrate a link to 
Mirador now that if somebody wanted to break this out as a separate page and do some analysis of it, potentially uh, some compound object work here. Uh, this just happens to be with with the uh, with airplanes, but where we actually see this coming in very handy, and the and the folks at Victoria did this too, is that we were going to put postcards in here, and we have a lot of those postcards in, in here. Uh, and so we put in a couple of links here just to kind of show how this thing works. Uh, the, you know, we do have a number of features. We tried to demonstrate all of the features of Spotlight, such as the carousels, uh, the just embedding of the text, uh, this mosaic kind of view so that we could drill down on it. Uh, in this particular case, we're using, we're still using the Open Sea Dragon viewer, but we have swapped that out for our production view. It's now uh, goes with the latest uh, Mirador that came out of Stanford, and we have put Mirador in here as the viewer. Um, and let me get back to the table of contents here. So, again, just a little bit about the navigation there and, and that we talked about. We did also uh, in this particular case, just a few uh, examples of how we could use tagging to create uh, the stored searches and allow curators and collection managers now to segment their collections uh, so that we could have, uh, you know, pages of postcards or, you know, pages of uh, foxholes and grenade diagrams or whatever comes in, uh, uh, you know, whatever come in a war exhibit. Um, and, and again, then demonstrating uh, the about section to this thing and how we could um, give credit to uh, donors for these, uh, for the exhibit and pieces of the exhibit. Uh, the other thing that we actually linked in and wanted to show more of now was being able to do a collaboration, for instance. So we knew that uh, the folks at the University of Victoria, they also have a spotlight instance that is a World War I exhibit. So you know, we're going to link to their site here so that we now enhance the experience that's in our exhibit. We start linking these two together. Uh, and we found several sites that do that, right? So we can see the, the North Carolina, for instance, North Carolina World War I exhibit. Uh, and if it answers up, it, it generally does, but I will skip that. Uh, we then, uh, since we were actually, uh, had this page up and we wanted to demonstrate features and capabilities, uh, Doug, brought up a, an instance of Avalon here, and we've been working with the folks at Indiana to bring up Avalon Media Services here so that we can incorporate audio video into our spotlight exhibits. And there were several ways to do this, and if we looked at the, the Stanford exhibits or some of the, the exhibits maybe from Cornell, uh, there was a way to incorporate that in spotlight as a native, native project. What we wanted to demonstrate though here is that we could actually have Avalon running. Uh, in this particular case, we have some video that uh, video and audio from one of our services, one of our agencies here, that we can embed that in a spotlight exhibit as well. And again, we're demonstrating just how flexible we're finding this thing to be. This is, this is an iframe that brings in this uh, audio segment from an Avalon server, and it, it truly does integrate very cleanly in uh, in this page. Uh, not that it's typical that you would put a forest ranger audio in the middle of a World War One collection or exhibit, but it, it just points out that if you do indeed have audio and video served up by another service, it is easy, it truly is easy to incorporate that uh, into, uh, into a collection that you're developing and ultimately into an exhibit that now would be more of a rich text. We did Hi, Michael. I'm sorry? 
Can we ask a quick question? Sure, sure. So these content pages that you've linked to from your table of contents and seem to have a lot of kind of rich layouts with multiple images and other things. Um, is that something you had to extend in Spotlight? Because I haven't seen that out of the box in our Spotlight ability to format content pages like that. Uh, so, uh, Randy, that uh, this truly is straight out of out of the box. Uh, this, you know, what we did, and the reason we put it in this test uh, instance is that I just kept working with it. So, if we look at the papers of uh, Gordon Clippingdale or uh, Richard Koth or whatever, the, these really are just standard features in uh, in spotlight, so we did we did not really change anything there, uh, but we did have to you know it took a little bit of working with it to decide how to make this work. So sometimes, uh, for instance, I might use uh, an embed feature uh, along with text, um, or I would just, for instance, oh, well that's not very good. I would just put the text above a, a carousel line, so. Uh, there really is nothing. There really is nothing new here. We did uh, we did develop a widget which was to to give us a WYSIWYG editor, and I think we put Tiny MCE in, uh, and then we turned a lot of features off because we just didn't want curators going crazy with what they had in the uh, in the viewer. So uh, that's used a little bit in here but really for the most part this is this really is just uh pretty much straight out of straight out of the box um yes okay, uh, thank, thank you i, I didn't want to hijack your i didn't want to hijack your whole presentation but thank you if there's any time at the very end i'd love to see what the administrative interface side of one of those pages looks like because i must have missed something perfect Happy Thanks. You, Andy. yes james yeah uh yeah, that's that's um, that's what we thought, Mike. Yeah, so it's it's not exactly out of the box. So we, we did think that some of the coolness there did rely upon the uh, uh, WYSIWYG uh, widget that we added to the uh, widget set there to go along with the carousel and etc. So it's nice to see that that's uh, playing out in a good way. Yeah, um, that that is a local customization. I mean, it's it's public in the sense that it's on GitHub and anybody can get it if they want it, but. Um, it, it might be um, a little bit of development time for anyone to try to merge that into their, uh, into their fork. The, um, and you're absolutely right. Uh, going back to what Jang said, uh, the, the uh, tiny MCE that we wanted to put in, for instance, uh, you know, I, if you look at this, the director title here, uh, I wanted a special formatting for it. I wanted to show up a special way. I wanted to get color involved. Uh, and, and change the, the type just a little bit, but not significantly. And so that's where we're using Tiny MCE. Uh, but some of these other uh, instances, and I'm happy to show it to you, some of these other instances were just uh, how would we craft the, the, the text that would flow and wrap around uh, an image. And that really was the, the challenge here, uh, was, how to, was how to make that text flow uh, work. Uh, and Randy, you bet. Toward the end, I will be happy to log in and show you any page that that we have here. Now, uh, while we were doing this work, uh, and uh, I have to give William credit for this. He's over in the uh, in the 360 room. Uh, is that we had been doing uh, these image loads uh, and items that we had uploaded had been coming from. Uh, a CSV upload, and we had decided that we needed to cut that cord and go all triple IF uh, in jest because it was so much cleaner. So we then actually uh, digitized a a work here that is the uh, Lewis Aboriginal portfolio, which you know is one of my favorite things to work with because it is it is full of these very nice color plates, right? And then, and I'm just, I like color, right? Uh, especially red when it's in there. So we, we did digitize that volume. Then we took all of the plates in that volume and 
uh, incorporated them into uh, a collection in Fedora. We then generated a IIIF collection manifest, uh, and there were like 184, 180 of these things all told. We pulled about 80 of them out and put them in a, in a collection uh, manifest. And with a single command, we put the whole thing into the collection. It was just too cool. I, you know, I figured something was wrong because it ran too fast and too smoothly, but it really does work cleanly. So we're now focusing all of our efforts on doing triple IF work into this area. Uh, that metadata that you see on this screen is being pulled out of the repository. We now work with it to, uh, uh, with our curators to get metadata. First off, we're saying that everything that's in this is going to be in the, all, all items will be cataloged in the repository. So you've got to put them into, uh, at this time, Fedora, ultimately DSpace or Fedora, everything goes in there with the metadata. Then we do the ingest and you, you know, the metadata that you get is what's in your collection. And in this particular case, you can see that we have indeed brought up uh, Mirador as the viewer. That's what we're gonna go production with. Uh, and we're working on now the tagging. Uh, in this particular case, uh, we'll go back to the, to the home here. We did work on faceting in this particular demo collection so that we could show curators how you could actually use the faceting part of it as well as the stored search and the browse capabilities. Um, so now uh, I, the hope would be that we would put together a demo exhibit in uh, or collection, uh, pardon me, collection inside of our infrastructure that shows all of these features in a demonstration method. And it's probably not something you do on a uh, normal basis, but we're, we're kind of running a demonstrator uh, case here. So uh, this, um, you know, in a little over 20 minutes here or whatever, this is pretty much the state of where we are with the infrastructure and the software and the components that you see in operation here uh, our team did go production with those, meaning that we have those servers running now, uh, opened up through the firewall. Curators, if they start building their, co their collections now, they're gonna be able to go public with them. Um, but it's just like saying that, hey, we just want production with MySQL. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's great. If there's no data there, you're just not gonna see anything, right? So uh, we're uh, now going to work actively with uh, a couple of our curators who have collections that they're ready to start developing. And we're very hopeful that by the summer, we're actually going to be demonstrating uh, real life production content that we can point at uh, and say, here's what's, here's what's in uh, our spotlight exhibits and collections. Uh, the exhibits will come a little later. And what's interesting there is we're developing a policy and practice around what we call an exhibit and what we call a collection. And we're making a distinction there uh, because uh, on a collection, we're just going to put lots of stuff out there. We might put hundreds and thousands of items in a collection, but if we're going to do an exhibit, then we're going to follow a little more disciplined approach to how that goes out. What is the scholarship? What is the content? Uh, what is the text that goes with it? What are the items that we want to show? Uh, and, and then you typically pay a little more of attention to these are donor items and we'll thank donors and so forth. So that's going in the policy part of it, uh, which you actually see in, in spotlight, you know, uh, it will be difficult to tell the difference, right? Uh, and so it's by policy how we put those things together. So uh, I'm um, tell you what I will do is I will go back here uh, very quickly. Um, Randy and so some things that we have done while I'm looking at this we we're not ready yet to support bookmarks so we're we're taking those kinds of things out we're, we're really not ready to support annotations uh, at a global level or our customers actually signing in yet and using these services uh, we chose not to work on that in favor of uh, the rest of this uh, the rest of the items in the site 
uh, that will come with time. Uh, the we did actually we did two catalogs. I can't get away without without showing this. We actually did a uh, a second collection that now shows. Uh, this is a kind of a history of Texas kind of uh, collection that's built around the catalog that went with this exhibit. Uh, it you know, we have some very interesting uh, browse categories there that would show uh, postcards that came out of Texas during the oil boom. Uh, you know, hopefully we would not let something like this burn like crazy forever now. Uh, but uh, this kind of shows some of the items that we have in our collection for the uh, for the Texas collection. I'll uh, I meant to get back over here and, and show you some pages uh, here on, um, for instance, uh, you know, here's the administrative interface, and and you can see here that uh, we are just using some of the normal uh, image widgets here. Uh, some of these would be the the WYSIWYG or the Tiny MCE uh, kind of. Uh, editing that we would do and uh, Randy to make it look the way I wanted to sometimes I would have to break things up like this just to get the spacing that I wanted or the effect out of it and that was something we found by uh, by trial and error so that's why sometimes you will not see any text at all in the uh, embed and we'll just put the text in uh, here's the, that I think this is that widget that William put together for us. Um, so Mike, can I ask a question? Oh, uh, sure, absolutely. Um, so that is that that's a new widget or is that tiny MCE added to the text widget? It, it is a new, it is a new widget. Uh, and I think William's on the, on the other line there, but you can see here, we, we added it as one of our, widgets. It's the only extension that we've made to the widget set, but uh, William incorporated this for us, uh, and we we then made sure that we only included uh, across the top here items that we felt would be safe for the formatting. Right. Uh, I'm wondering um, if you guys considered contributing that to Spotlight rather than putting it in your A&M repo. Um, it seems like a, a widget that other in the community could benefit from. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. William? Yeah, we'd be more than happy to um, make a pull request upstream. It is a, uh, a search driver widget with TinyMC embedded. Uh, mm -hmm. Obviously, some additional uh, JavaScript libraries required. Um, and, and potentially, we'd have to make some improvements on the abstraction of the configuration of the WYSIWYG, since uh -huh. that would be nice to have that real-time customizable. Oh, but, right. um, out of the box, you could you could ship it with it? It'd, it'd be fairly straightforward to, to uh, have a pull request. Uh, we did we did offer it up a while back, and um, at the time, it wasn't of interest, so we kind of didn't package it that way. Oh, is that right? Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I, I would it worth bringing up again, just um, because from the beginning of Spotlight, we've we've always hoped that widgets would be the one thing that would be we'd see contributions from people and that would benefit the whole community so I, I do know the reason it was it was not of interest at the time is because it gives too much flexibility to curators and that might be not desirable by certain universities right. such as like branding and wild yeah. fonts and things like that no i i agree that that is probably the the main concern um but as you mentioned i think uh, we don't really do this with any other widgets yet but um so i don't know how complicated it would be but having um, a configuration section where you could basically uh, control, you know, the how the widget is going to uh, be presented to the curator, uh, yeah. that could solve that problem, right? Yeah, with, with this one, it's pretty easy. It could just be a, a freeform JSON edit, and that's what the config for the tiny MC would be. It wouldn't have to be complex. Yeah, so that would, yeah, right, that wouldn't even require a UI. We could just do it at the, in the JSON file. Yeah, um, big, big plus to this discussion um, um, because I was, I was just texting Gary uh, and I said, you know, basically, I want this. <laughs> 
So, <laughs> yeah, and I was going to say, we here at Harvard would love this as well. So, certainly something other institutions, another plus one over here. And I actually had a question. I don't want to derail the widget conversation, but I was curious to know, um, I see you have made your own header and footer. And so I was wondering if you made use of the theme feature that Jesse talked about um, during our last call and just wanted to hear a little bit more about that, if so. So we do have, uh, and Vanessa, in a moment, I'm going to let Beth chime in because Beth works on UI UX side here. We do have a header standardization initiative going in the libraries. Our goal is to make all of these things, uh, all of our pages, product, uh, services, everything have a, a fairly common look and feel. So this, this header area up here is going to change in the next couple of weeks. Uh, we will remove exhibits here and there will be a second line across here, which will be digital collections uh, to give some consistency to the, the pages. So yes, we do that by tweaking, the, we've been tweaking the CSS. And, and, and again, before I turn it over to Beth, what I would say is that the theme, the theme features we thought was really very cool, uh, but these pages predated that and, and I was just too lazy to go back in and work with it. Uh, but we were also, from our side, uh, to pick up on something that William said, we are a little nervous that uh, folks will see the feature and decide they want to use it, whether we really should or not. And, and we're not opposed to it. We're not opposed to any of that. We just like to do it in, in a more disciplined approach so that folks just don't go willy-nilly with it. So we're gonna have some tweaks to the header. Uh, we're also gonna have some tweaks to this footer. Uh, we're going to try to keep them as small and as compact as possible so that we can uh, focus on the content uh, as much as possible because we really like the way this shows. And with that, Beth, is there anything you'd like to add on that side? Um, yeah, so I think uh, the use of theming is more of a um, process and policy issue rather than a technical issue. Um, so that at our initial stage right now that we're focusing on digital collections is just kind of buckets that exist and that as we move forward with exhibits, um, we already have a process for what's called microsites or that's what we call them, um, where they can start having a lot more robust bust and kind of unique branding allowed to them but um, and so in the future if they wanted to use that type of theming where it became a lot more unique then um, they would have to follow that microsite process which is just a different way that we develop sites and have kind of different like sign offs and such yeah I guess I guess maybe what I what I wanted to add about that um, from the Stanford perspective is um, it looks like what you've done here at A&M, you know, with your demo, you have your, you have your standard, um, your, you have your standard branding here. You haven't, you haven't really done work with the sort of the template option per, per Vanessa's um, question. Um, we've done the same thing at Stanford and our foray into that work and Gary can correct me if I'm wrong is the customization that were that we offered when um, Parker Library on the Web version 2.0 um, was released in January um, as part of Spotlight, a, a, another one of our Spotlight exhibits. And I would echo what Mike said um, to some degree. We want to be cautious about offering that option because we can't have people go willy nilly doing whatever it is that they want sort of a thing. And we need to be able to exert some measure of control. Gary, did you want to add to that? Uh, yeah, just to, to be clear that um, we actually, as you said, we, we have the same concerns um, about consistent branding and um, the theme that we've, we've talked about in the past that we did add for, for Parker all that theme does is remove the our branded uh, footers um, and changes the background color of the body um, so that it gives it a little di different look. And that was just because of the unique partnership we have with the Parker Library. Um, and we're not actually, we're, we're, 
we wouldn't let any other exhibit, um, a normal Stanford-based exhibit, to use that theme because we don't want to lose the branding. Um, so it's a very, at this point anyway, the, our use of theming is in a, a very specific um, use and limited use case. Okay, thank you for the clarification. So it sounds like you normally would just make your own CSS file and you would only need to make a theme if you had a special use case that you wanted to be different from your standard like universities. Yeah, or I mean, in theory, you could do, like you said, it's just, a, it's just another CSS file that overwrites, um, that's sort of loaded last, so it, it overwrites any um, styling that you want to change. So if you wanted, for example, to provide uh, curators with a choice of um, body background color, so, you know, a light, a darker, you know, shade than this off-white or whatever, um, you could use it for that purpose pretty simply, you know, uh, just with a, a, a theme-specific CSS file where you overwrite the body background color um, or, you know, little things like that. So. That, that to me is a potential way to do it where you don't really change your overall uh, institutional theming, like the headers and footers and stuff, but maybe you want to allow a little bit of customization in the, the, the meat of the exhibit. But um, yeah, I, I imagine most people want to be consistent like, like um, we Cool. About. And Gary, while you're, while you're there, one thing I like about the about the Parker site, and what I need to learn is, is we're looking at a page now with uh, with Mirador up. At, at Parker, the Mirador viewer actually takes over the, you know, all of that center frame, and then the metadata is beneath it, so that you get a much bigger view of the image. I'd like to learn how to do that for our for some of our stuff as well. I, and yeah, and we recently, I think, also um, changed the, the item show page to, even if you're, you're not using Mirador, if you're using the standard viewer, um, I think we now show the metadata below um, that viewer as well, just because okay. we decided that um, we wanted to give that wider um, real estate for the viewer, yeah. So I think I don't. I, I think we may have decided we don't want to make that decision for everybody using Spotlight. So that may be a Stanford exhibit specific customization. But um, it would be easy for a developer to go into the the exhibits repo and look at the 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 view for the show page probably and see what we did there. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you. So I, I'm going to go ahead and stop. Um, hey, Michael. Yes. Michael, this is this is Marilyn. Okay. Um, Marilyn. I have a question about, I think maybe this is a widget, but there was one page that you showed with one of the content pages for the Great War. Okay. It had a content box where you could um, page through multiple objects, and I think there were three objects, and they were represented by circles down at the bottom of that content box. Oh. Was that a slideshow widget? Sure. I'm sorry, I can't remember which page it was. You mean like this? Yes, yes, yes. This, is that this. a slideshow widget? This is, uh, okay, and we notice this sometimes the, the edit dis disappears, so uh, bear with me for just a second, Marilyn, okay. and I will get you over, uh -huh. that, uh, over to that page, uh, and we'll edit it. Uh, that, that is also, that's just a regular, that's just a regular widget in it's a uh, carousel widget. Yeah, yeah, this, yeah. Gary knows the name of it. I wouldn't know the name of it. Um, yeah, th there is a slideshow widget. It's a little different. I, I don't. We don't use it a lot. It's um, uh -huh. it, it provides the the image on the left side, and then on the right side there is like the the titles of everything that's in the um, slideshow. So you can basically click on titles and have it change the image on the left. Um, so well, what I'm, I'm interested in the carousel widget yeah. because it looks like what Stanford is displaying on their details, the record detail page, when there are multiple digital objects associated with the same metadata. Is that oh. correct? Or? No, no. That's, the viewer. Yeah. that's the viewer. Okay, it's something totally different. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, thank you. Thank yeah. you, Michael. I, I enjoyed seeing these exhibits and oh. collections. 
Um, folks, I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording now. So, um, and then we can just, you know, spend the last few minutes doing what we need to do. So, okay, perfect. Thank Great. you, Kathy. I appreciate that. Yeah.